بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم ولي الله تعالى عنه وسلم تابعين وآل ما امنين وائم عرب المشاهدين ومقلديهم الى يوم الدين ما بعد so this uh what i want to you know what i want to cover is from one of the books of uh, Sheikh Abdullah the Qurayya subhanahu wa ta'ala rahmati i mean and it's more so pertaining to is pertaining to uh things such as uh muraqaba or etiquette you know to kind of like build you more of a a foundation spiritual and so the say the the section now i'm just going to you know cover is really about about dua right about uh dua where you know when you making dua for people because so it's something that's kind of like overlooked you know dua is it just for just in 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 the time of need either it's it's all the way around the board so anyway so <clears throat> Make make the halakha get the angels get the angels on ya. <laughs> so the first thing he mentions is that is mendu that is highly recommended to make dua for people who aren't present, right? And of course, it's been narrated by the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This is like a secret. This is a secret. It's what they call siru, meaning that the blessing isn't as apparent, right? You know, it's not. It's not as apparent. It's like a secret. You know, not everybody knows this. Everybody knows you make dua, but the secret is this. This like this special recipe, all right? Now, the special recipe of your duas, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned in the Hadith by Imam Muslim, Sahih Imam Muslim. He said, the Prophet said, Man min ibad ibdin yad'u yad'u li akhihi bi dhahri ghayri illa wa qala malik wa laka mithlu dhalik. Right? He says that the Prophet said that there's no servant who makes dua for his brother who is absent except that the angel says, Ameen, you know, and for the light, you know, basically, wa laka. Uh, and the likes of that is for you too. In another narration, the Prophet Sallallahu said, "Da'watu mar'i Muslim bi dhahri ghayb mustajaba mustajaba ta'inda ra'asihi ra'asihi malikun right? Kullama da'an li akhihi bi khair wa qala malikun mawakkilu bihi so he says that the, in another hadith, another narration, when you say a narration, it's another hadith that's been narrated. He, meaning Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, the dua of a person, of a person for a Muslim who is absent, his dua is mustajabah. Okay? So the first one, the first one didn't use the word mustajaba, meaning accept it, but that's what was implied in the first hadith. Okay, the first hadith he says that it, uh, that he makes the dua for his brother who isn't present. Then he says that the waqal al malik. Then the angel says walaka mithlu dalik. Right? He says, and the angel says, I mean the same for you. Versus the second uh, narration, a hadith that is mentioned, he says da'wat al marru and Muslim, the person who makes dua for a Muslim. Be dhahri ghayb, right? The who's not present, mustajaba. Mustajaba, right? Mustajaba means that it's accepted. Okay? That it's accepted. So now you know with firm confirmation. So when you're making dua for somebody that's not present, <clears throat> know for certain that dua is answered, huh? Mustajaba, uh, M U S T. Oh, oh, how many love? Meme scene ta ta gene alif ba ta ma buta gene alif ba ta ma buta. So he said, at the <coughs> he says in the rasu right in the rasi 
Now, this, he's a little more specific. The Prophet said, tell him, in this particular narration, he said, at the head is an angel. For every time da'an, every time he makes dua, li'akhi, for his brother, bi khair. Right? Every time he makes a dua for his brother, for good, the angel says, right? He says, malik, Right? He said that the angel, that angel says, replies, uh, okay, and he says in the same uh, or the like for him. So if you want a a, a a cherry red, you know, Corvette 2020 joint, then you say, "O oh Allah, we ask you and beg you to bless Abdul Sami with that red Corvette, you know, the 2020 joint." <laughs> Ami. Ami. And the angel says, <laughs> Well, Mithil who for that? Well, lack of well, lack of Mithil And the same for you. You see? I ain't saying me. Yeah, I ain't me. That was a dua. That was a real dua. <laughs> oh, oh, Allah, you know, bless Sufyan with some VCs. I mean, I mean. right? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? You make dua for your, 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 your dunya and your akhira. You don't just, you know, you, you can do it in both. Right, especially if you want to answer it, you pray for somebody else that they get the thing that you that you want. So anyway, so then he says <clears throat> in another narration, it says, "Yaqulu lahu Allah Taala, Ya Abdi Bika Abtu Di Abtu Right? He says, "Well, Allah Taala says to him, Oh my servant, it is with you that I that I will begin." In another narration, it says, "Asra'u Dua Ijabatan Da'watu." Right? The, the, the fastest way to get your dua answered is to make dua for the person who's not present. So he says it is essential when making dua that the person the person make uh make present in his heart the meaning of true brotherhood, which is naturally indicated in the above cited hadith. Now that's one thing. If you have a gen genuine genuine love for someone. You're going to make dua for them, right? You're faster to make dua for somebody you know versus somebody you don't know. Truth, truth be told. Because a stranger, you don't even know his name to say, oh, Allah bless such and such. You might be like, Allah you know, bless the brother that had on the white kufi that I talked to today. You may not even know his name. But somebody that you know, it's going to be sincere. You see somebody going through something. You couldn't give him money in order to pay his bill and you know the service got shut off. You don't laugh at him and talk about him. You're like, look, I ain't really got nothing for you. And this is what the Prophet said him used to do. People will come to him and sometimes he didn't have anything to give them. He said, then I'll, I'll make dua for you that you get it. Right? You know, and you see that person in a bad space, you will sincerely make dua for them. You might even wake up in the middle of the night, the last third of the night, make wudu get up and just to ask Allah Ta'ala for that brother. This is ibadah and this is true suhbah. You can only share that camaraderie with people that you con that you that you frequent. I'm not saying that you can't do it with Muslims that you don't know, but it ain't gonna be here like it would be with somebody that you know. It's not gonna be. So, but anyway, or unless you love a person on the strength of a person that you know that loves them, like you'll love somebody's children the same way that the that your friend that your that's your sahin, right? You'll love his children the same way he loves his children. Right? They said it was a uh I can't remember, it's a narration though, it was a man where his 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 close companion, you know, every time he seen, you know, his children, he would give them gifts. Right? And why? Because of the, the love that he had for the you know for the for the father, the, the, the love that he that he had for him. So anyway, so to proceed on, he said it is essential when you make dua that the person make present in his heart. The meaning of true brotherhood, which is naturally indicated in the above hadith, as well as the meaning of being a, a, a servitude, a slave, right? Which is referred to in the above, where Allah Ta'ala <coughs> Well Allah Ta'ala says, Ya Abdi, O oh my servant, right? So you so you know you make your heart, you have to you, you don't just make empty dua. You have to make your heart present, right? It's like even like with the Quran, when we read the Quran, we have to make our hearts present with the Quran. We ain't just reading it just to be reading it. But you know, okay.
All right, sound like it. Yo, you make your make your heart present. <clears throat> so anyway, he must behave based upon the perfect love he should have for his brother and his companion by making himself stand in the place of his brother, where he, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, mentioned a du'a'u a du'a'u huwa ibadah. Right? He said that du'a is a, uh, is worship. It's an act of worship. And then what Allah Ta'ala, I mean, what the Prophet Sallallahu said, لَنْ يَحْلِكَ مَعَ دُعَاءِ أَحَدٌ No one is destroyed as a result of making dua. Meaning you don't lose anything by making dua for people. Right? Then uh, the Prophet Sallallahu said, In Allah يُحِبُّ مُحِلِّينَ مُلِحِينَ فِي الدُعَاءِ Indeed Allah loves the one who is uh, uh, urgent or, you know, is urgent in his dua. And then he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also said, Man lam yasalallahu yabdibu alayhi. And whoever does not ask Allah Ta'ala for anything, Allah will be angry with him. He says, however, <coughs> the dua indicated in the above mentioned hadith have their correct inward, you know, inward etiquette. As it was stated in the hikam, where it says, do not let the postponing of time, uh, of the time of giving, even though one is present in the du'a, be what necessitate, necessitates you despairing, right? So you don't postpone, you know, out of, you know, I might not have time or so on and so forth, but be present with that du'a. Don't, don't put it off. He says, for Allah Ta'ala conceals for you the answer in what he chooses for you. And not in what you choose for yourself, right? So don't become uh, a person like if you make dua for something and you didn't get it right away. Don't become a person like when you become hopeless. Like oh Allah ain't never gonna answer my dua. I made dua for this and Allah never answered that dua, right? And this is what he's saying. He says Allah conceals for you uh, the answer and what He chooses for you. If Allah sees fit for you, He gives it to you. And this ultimately, this is one of the gist. The very gist of Tawheed is knowing that Allah Ta'ala is in control of things and you're not in control of them. So he says, and Allah Ta'ala is not what you choose for yourself. In time which he desires and not in the time which you desire. So you don't have control over the response. It's with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. It also says there's nothing more desired for you like being in dire need. There is nothing swifter for you with the regard, uh, with regard of getting your uh, request answered, like being in a state of humiliation and, and destitution, meaning when you're when you're in it, there's nothing like you ever been in a desperate state where you needed Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala for something, you ain't have no other choice. All other options was off the table, and your dua be so sincere when when you in that desperate state, and you're so humble when you're in that desperate state, right? Yeah, I mean you like. Humble. There's nothing arrogant about you. You are even to, to like tears is running out your face. Oh Allah, just whatever it is you want from me, I'm willing to take it. Right? You be, you just at that point, you you don't lose hope. You resort everything over to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? Not no, well, I want this new Corvette, so I'm gonna make dua for it. I'm gonna go out here and I'm gonna work harder. No, you I mean you're absolute, you don't even see yourself doing anything. You just all submitted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what he's talking, you know, this is what he's talking about. He said, it is also said, if you desire the arrival of the, you know, your uh, dua being answered, then realize the verification that poverty in need is, is your true state. He says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the same ayah that I quoted earlier. Ya ayyuhal nasu antimu fuqara, right? O mankind, you are in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right, and he also mentions another ayah where Allah Taala mentions in the Quran the translation. Indeed, the uh, zakat is for the poor and the destitute. Right, so poverty, poverty is like your baseline, and then Allah enriches you. Many sahabas, and you'll see it as time. And one thing I'm realizing about life: your poverty when you were young. Or your wealth when you were young, it gets richer for most people as you get older. As you get older, 
your sustenance come to you a little easier and in bulk. When you're younger, you struggle a little bit more. But as you, as you, you know, you, you, you reach your, your, you know, your apex, your, your wealth comes to you easy. Right? So, but anyway, he said, it also says the affair is not in the existence of what is desired. The true affair is your being provided with excellence in seeking. And it also, it also says, do not ask your Lord about the postponement for what you desire. Ra rather ask your own soul about the postponement of your adab with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. SubhanAllah. The thing which you seek will not stop as long as you are asking your Lord. And what you desire will not be easy if you are seeking it by, by yourself. And you asking is not the causative factor in granting the request from him, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for in that case, you will have little understanding of him. Especially about, imagine a person who's constantly busy, constantly at work and working and things of that nature, you know, Allah will, Allah knows that that person's innermost being and Allah grants that person what he desires. You know, what he's seeking, what he's seeking out, right? Without, without, without him, let's say for instance, like you're a person that's constantly on the moon, maybe you're busy with dawah, working and all this, where your nights end, sometimes you just fall asleep, you don't have no control over the way you fall asleep. What you've been meaning to ask Allah Ta'ala for, Allah already knows and he gives it to you, right? This is, this is for special people. So anyway, he said, you're asking him should be merely <coughs> in order to manifest your servitude to, to Allah Ta'ala. So when you're seeking dua, when you're making dua and you're asking Allah for something, see yourself as a slave begging your master, right? Don't see yourself as like, you know, I asked you Allah and you ain't giving me nothing. No, you have to be humble because a slave doesn't, doesn't possess any arrogance. He doesn't have much pride, right? Usually slaves take pride when they gain their freedom. This is why, this is why you'll see that in most in our political situation, meaning with, with black Americans, our freedom was handed and it ain't even handed. It was, it was handed with restrictions. See, had we been like Nat Turner, you know, or somebody of that nature that, that, that waged a physical war, you would have a lot more pride. Like the people, like if you know anything about the, uh, the revolt in Haiti, the, the Haitian people are very proud. Why? Because they stomped out the French in order to gain their limited freedom. Right? Cause Haiti's still a French colony, just without the, the parent, the, the presence of the actual, uh, uh, French. Okay? So you have to come humble as a servant. You have to have humility. Because slaves don't have pride in that same capacity. He said, you're asking Emilia in, in, uh, uh, in order to manifest servitude to him to establish the rights of his lordship. And for whenever the door of comprehending that wisdom of his withholding a thing from you is open to you, it is then uh, the withholding becomes the source of, of Allah Ta'ala granting you your thing. And this is why the Prophet ﷺ said, and after this, inshallah, we're going to stop. We're going to stop there. The Prophet ﷺ said, مَا مِن دَعَنْ يَدْعُ إِلَّا أَسْتَجَابَ أَسْتَجَابَ اللَّهِ دَعَوَتَهُ أَوْ صَرَّفَ عَنْهُ مِثْلِهَا فِي سُعَنْ أَوْ حُطَّ مِنْ ذُنُوبِهِ بِقَدْرِ مَا قَدْرِهَا مَا لَمْ يَدْعُ بِعِثْمٍ أَوْ قَطِيَّ Rahimi, uh, Rahimi, uh, Rahimi. He said, there's no one who makes a dua with a dua except, except that Allah answers his dua or takes off from him, uh, something that's evil or wipe away the extent of his sins. As long as he does not make dua for fulfillment of a sin or breaking the ties of kinship, right? Never make dua, oh Allah, separate me from my mother or my father. Yo, oh, oh Allah, you know, don't ever allow my son to see his father or, you know, never allow my mother to see, you know, and so on and so forth, right? Never make those kind of duas and never make dua for a sin. He said, there's no doubt that the absolute answer to one's dua will definitely occur. Therefore, it is incumbent upon the one making dua to do so with the truth and courtesy in accordance with what, what has been related uh, from the promise of the most truthful 
For it has come that the uh, from in a hadith where Jibril alayhi salam said, Ya Rabbi Abdu ka fulan aqdi hajatat hajatahu fayakul da'a abdi fa'inni uhibbu an asma'a asma'a sawtuhu. O oh my Lord, O oh our Lord, your servant so and so answers his needs. Uh, your, your, your servant so and so answer his needs. Then he says, "Leave my servant, for I love to listen to his voice." Right? Uh, Abdul Aziz Al Mahdi once said, "Whoever, whoever in his du'a does not leave his choice and is not content with the choice of being uh, of the absolute, meaning Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, then he is the one who is enticed and is among those." Whom it is said, fulfill his needs, for verily I hate his voice. And whoever flows <coughs> with the choice of, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <coughs> uh, uh, is, is answered even when he is not granted what he desires. This is because all of the action is based on it ending. And in the hikam it says, perhaps the correct adab demanding that a person abandons action asking for his needs, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uh, said transmitted from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala meaning it's a hadith of Qudsi it says man shagalahu dhikri an mas'alati a'ati a'ati tuhu afdalu ma'ati sa'ilina whoever is preoccupied with the remembrance from asking me I will give him that which is better than that which I give to those who ask the bottom line is is that uh, all asking of Allah Ta'ala is not perfected except when it occurs from a perspective of servitude. So whenever you make dua, come, you know, and approach that dua like a like a humble servant, right? Not someone that's that's arrogant or so on and so forth. So with that, inshallah, we'll stop there. Subhanakallah.